All right. Uh, a number of people have asked me recently about taking form responses and saving them as PDFs. And it'd be great if there were a built-in function to do this in Microsoft Forms. Uh, I should say a built-in automated function. There is a way to do it to basically say you can go in and view your results and then you can uh, print the response and print it to PDF. But that's a very manual action and not something you generally want to do all the time. Uh, but in terms of automating it so that whenever someone submits a form, you end up with a PDF document of the response. And there are a lot of different ways to do this. This is just the way that I choose to do it because it's pretty simple. Um, and basically, it's entirely free. So we're going to use a, in my case, I'm saving it to OneDrive. You could save it also to SharePoint, but you do need to use a OneDrive uh, do you need to use OneDrive as sort of a temporary place? So basically what I've done is, uh, the idea is for the flow, uh, I'm first going to take the response data and I'm going to create it as an HTML file. So this does require just a little bit of knowledge of HTML, nothing fancy, just basic paragraph tags, maybe some um, formatting tags and heading tags, etc. Uh, but I'm not going to you know, nothing, nothing sophisticated here, just standard plain Jane vanilla HTML. Uh, but basically what I'm going to do is create it as an HTML document in, and to support that I've created in my OneDrive here, a folder called HTML temp. Um, so basically that's going to take, and I've already run my flow and this is an example of what the response looks like as an HTML file. Um, pretty standard and then uh, going to use essentially once you've created that HTML temp file you can use a OneDrive action called convert file to convert it to a PDF and then I'm saving those converted PDFs into this other folder I've created called PDFs out uh, and again in this scenario I'm saving it to OneDrive but you could save this just as easily to SharePoint to uh, well, either OneDrive or SharePoint, that's pretty much where you're going to save things in, in Microsoft 365. Um, but I guess in theory this would also work to save things if you're using like the Google Drive connector or whatever. Anyway, uh, let's take a look at how this actually works. So uh, basically just starting with the form, it's a very basic form, um, and again this the level of sophistication in your form might change how sophisticated your HTML code needs to be. Uh, in particular, right here, I'm just asking for, I have a, a short text input, a long text input, and then a multiple choice question. If you had something else like um, ratings or a Likert scale or whatever, uh, basically those different types of questions are going to produce the, you know, the, the data that comes into Power Automate when you get the response details is going to be formatted differently. So you need to think about how you're going to take that and express it in language, in, in words, in that HTML content that you're creating. But again, for the purposes of this, I've just kept it real simple. There are a lot of other videos out there on how to create other kinds of content, uh, other form, format that content from forms into your PDF files or HTML files. So basically I've got three questions and then in our flow uh, I've started with the standard when the form response so when, when a new response is submitted there's that committee nomination form getting the response details because you need to get that data uh, and then because I knew that I wanted to use the time zone or the um, the submission time so we get the submission time from the response details uh, and actually from the trigger itself but it comes in as a, you know, in a format that isn't terribly useful because we can't use it in a file name because it contains some characters that wouldn't be friendly for file names. Uh, and it's just not generally readable to humans. So I just threw some convert time zone actions in here because it's also in UTC. So the first thing I'm doing is uh, in order, you know, for the file name, I want to include the submission time at the end of the file name in the format of year, four digit year, two digit month, two digit day, dash, hour, minute, seconds. 
just so that I have a clear timestamp of when that file was created right there in the file name. Uh, this is also going to help uh, to prevent, you know, the possibility of multiple of duplicate file names, which will cause issues. Uh, and then basically in the convert time zone action, we're setting the source time zone as UTC, the destination as Eastern time, because that's the time zone that I'm in on the East Coast, the US. Uh, so that's the converting the time zone for the file name. And then in the that HTML file itself, uh, or in the PDF, I want to say when the file was submitted or when the response was submitted. So I'm doing two more conversion actions here, basically to get the time in short time format. So I want to say, you know, 1.45 p.m., etc., uh, as well as converting the date into the long date pattern. So I want to have the short time of 1.45 p.m. on Monday, June 15th, 2019, or whatever it is. You get the idea. Uh, so basically, you don't need these. I'm just using them because I knew I wanted to include that into, you know, that data in the various components. Uh, so then I have another scope here where I am creating the file components. And this is pretty simple. The com these are just to compose actions. Uh, the first one is building the name of the file, and it's just going to be you know, kind of, I want everyone to start with committee nominee response and then have the number of that response. So the response ID from the dynamic content when a new response is submitted. And then I want to say it was received. And then this is the convert time zone for file name output. So it's going to be that four digit year, two digit month, blah, blah, blah. You get it. Uh, so that's the file name, and you want to be sure to add that .html on the end, so it will properly be recognized as an HTML file. Uh, next up, the file content. Now, this is where that kind of fundamental understanding of HTML comes into play. And obviously, if you know HTML better than me, you can put whatever you'd like in here. Uh, but I like to just keep the the HTML simple so I simply have an h1 or heading first level heading tag to say com committee nomination form response number and then that response ID number and then I have a paragraph tag and then the strong so I want the nominee name text to be in bold I have a line break so it'll have say nominee name in bold and then on the next line show the name that was entered on the form uh, and then qualifications or qualities, and then another line break and that response. And then was the nomination self-solicited in that response? You get the idea. It's pretty straightforward. Then at the bottom, we're just saying form submitted at, and this is the um, time, and this is the date. So that's it. Nothing exciting so far. Uh, and then the last uh, last scope I have here is to create and convert. And basically what I'm using are two OneDrive. And again, you could create this file, this HTML file in SharePoint, but there is no SharePoint convert file action. Um, so you would have to use this, this OneDrive action anyway. So I just like just use use OneDrive to create that HTML because you're not keeping that anyway. Uh, actually, I didn't include a step to delete that, but that would be kind of the final step to clean things up is to delete that HTML file once the PDF has been created. So um, basically, we're just going to create the file as HTML in that HTML temp folder. And for the file name, it's just the outputs of that compose statement or the compose action the compose file name action. Uh, the file content is the output of the compose file content action. It's pretty clear. And then lastly, in here we are converting that file. So we're taking the ID. Uh, so this is the unique identifier, just to kind of show you what that is. It's unique identifier of this file. And I'm getting that 
from the output of the create file is HTML. It's the ID value. That's all I need. And then for the type, um, you can convert it to a number of different formats, but I'm just saying PDF because that seems to be a common one that people want. Uh, and then the last step, so this will create the HTML file, convert the HTML file, and then if you do nothing, that HTML or that, that PDF file doesn't actually get saved anywhere. So you need another create file action. And again, in this case, I'm saving it to OneDrive, but you could save this to SharePoint as well using the SharePoint create file action. Uh, I've just renamed it to create file as PDF to differentiate it from the create file as HTML action. So just to rename, it's important to rename actions logically so that you'll know what's going on. And if someone, especially if someone else takes a look at this flow later, they'll be able to kind of interpret what's happening there. So basically it's this action asks for a folder path, kind of the same as this file action. Where, where are you creating that file? What's the name? What's the content? Uh, so I'm just creating that in PDFs out and I'm using the uh, file name from convert file. So that convert file action is producing an output of file name. So if I search for name and I look under convert file, file name, and then the file content. And it's important that you, because if you search for content, um, well, in this case, I'm just showing only that convert file content, but you want to be sure that you don't um, use the same content that you used up here. So if you use that compose file content action as the output, it's just not going to work because it's not going to be properly format it. All right, so that is that. Um, and just to show you this in action, I'll go and I'll submit that form again. We'll preview this and let's say we are going to nominate Donald Duck. And I'll say he is an ornery Duck, probably misspelled ornery, and we'll say that yes, he did ask me to nominate him, submit that, and we'll jump over and we'll take a look at the, oh, I guess I did not save this since I added all those scopes, so let me just do a quick save, and we'll go back here, and we can see that that ran 14 seconds ago, it succeeded. So there's our new response. There's the response details. Here's, oh, it didn't actually save all those scopes. Oh, well, that's not a big deal. Um, but anyway, we've got the conversion, file, the time zone conversions. We've got the file name. So if we take a look at how this content's being built, there we go. There's all that stuff. It's creating the file as HTML. It's converting the file and then it's creating it as PDF because you need to create that as PDF. So there you go. And if I go over to my OneDrive, we can take a look at, there's my committee nominee response number two, received year, long date, etc. cetera. Um, there's the content of it. And if I go back over and look at our PDFs out folder, there is the PDF format version of it. Um, and you'll notice that the, the PDF conversion changes the font to, I think this is Calibri font because you know everything is Calibri by default in, in Microsoft, um, rather than the Times New Roman that shows up in the HTML. And if you wanted to, again, if you know HTML, I'm, I'm, I don't know HTML. I know enough to get by. But if you are an HTML wizard and want to format it using whatever font you want and whatever other styles you want, that's your call. Uh, I just wanted to keep it simple and functional. So there you go. That is kind of the quick way to take a form response 
and save it as a PDF, save it first as HTML, convert that HTML to PDF, and then save that PDF to OneDrive. Uh, and then as I said, the last step that I would probably do if, in, in kind of a real production flow, just to kind of keep things clean, would be to add a new step at the end here to delete file because you don't necessarily want that HTML. Once you've created that PDF, you don't need that HTML file anymore. So I'm just going to delete the, uh, I need the ID, but I want to delete the one that was created as HTML. So again, really good reason to rename your steps. Don't delete the PDF that you just created. Make sure you delete that HTML file that was created temporarily. So there we go, and I can save. And let's you know what? Let's run this one more time, and I'll submit another response. And let's say this time I'm doing George Washington, and he wouldn't tell a lie. And no, he did not ask me to nominate him. I'll submit that. And flow should run pretty darn quickly, but we'll give it just a few seconds to finish. Actually, let me go over to the HTML folder. And it says it succeeded. Oh, there it is. So yeah, we can see it actually did. The HTML file was there, but got deleted. Great. Uh, and the final output is still in our, that PDF document is still there in our uh, PDFs out folder. So yay, that all worked. Um, it's a Friday miracle. So there you go. That is my quick and dirty uh, way to create, take form response, save the values as a PDF document uh, in OneDrive or SharePoint, depending on what your requirements are.